Existence. A World Made New. Written by Jared Neely. I don't see it, I don't see nothing. Immediately poking his arm across he felt nothing against the leather underneath him. It's got to be pinched out out by now. He shrieked, unless it rolled between the seat. He said, reassuring him. Dean turned towards him get it man, I'm still fucking burning, my ass is on fire. Comma come on man. He hollered losing his grip on the seat with his shoes against the dashboard. Watch it, Dean. Comma hit the brakes. Panicking, he cried in desperation. Something hit him, his eyes fluttered until they opened, blinking once and then twice until the room began to spin overhead. I'm sorry. Rustled a gentle, tight-lipped voice into his left ear. He could feel the warmth of her mouth breathing on him as it suppressed. Glaring at the popcorn-textured ceiling he laid against the rigid sofa realizing he had fallen asleep without apprehending how much time had passed. I'm still here, it was just a fucked up dream he thought, raising to a sitting position with his legs draped against the floor below. He sat a moment pondering the night terror. Slinks and chip. He didn't know what to believe anymore. He held his head, placing both hands over his ears. He clutched the shower handles and cranked them until water trickled down onto his naked body. It became lukewarm within seconds as it hit his face underneath the shower head. He continued to ponder about the dream while lathering a dab of suave shampoo into his hair. He closed his eyes allowing the fragrance of the soap suds to wash away. His brawny chin was tilted towards the large oval head as water sloshed onto him. Tauumi? cried undisclosed voice and faintly died off into the hallway. He immediately peered out from the shower liner. Hello? Anyone there? He uttered, receiving only silence. Pulling it back into place he stood underneath the faucet flowing strongly over him. Scouring himself beneath it he shut his eyes once again relaxing his mind. Without warning, he was knocked to the filthy surface. A thundering resonance whistled overhead and crashed into the tree line a hundred yards out. Three men in duck hunter camouflage were laying face planted along the overgrown vegetation. He hastily observed them lowering himself to the ground. There was others not far from them in utility uniforms ablaze and partially buried underneath the smoldering weeds. A bloody Dem-1 helmet had rolled towards him during the blast and now rested at his side. He clutched his fingers around it bringing it to his face. He examined it a moment, suddenly spotting a patch of human hair inside. Fuck! He shrieked, tossing it back against the soil. What just happened? Shit! Common not again! He yelped, staring into the vast wilderness. This is a search and destroy mission G.I., you get me private? Shouted ill-tempered man, kneeling alongside him in the bloody dirt. His Gomer Pyle's cotton sateen uniform was blackened from war. He glared at him cautiously from behind the waist-high plantation. What? Wow! He began to speak but was immediately intercepted with the unnerving howling of a dumped man lying not far from them. Private Gunner, Gunner, help me motherfucker I've been hit, I know you're over there I can hear you in the brush. He bellowed. I'm going to die out here in this goddamn jungle. Comma oh shit dot 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 no. Comma I need a medivac sent in now before I fucking bleed to death he squealed hunched against the earth where his lightweight M60 machine gun cascaded into pieces beside him. My arms are gone dot 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 oh Jesus both of my arms are fucking gone. Comma please help me. Commander Samson. Comma pop smoke you cocksucker signal a aircraft now and get us the fuck out of here I beg you. Dot. Commander Samson? Tommy asked him, wondering how he had recalled the name. Hank Samson? How do I know this? He elicited, peering at him. What in God's balls, son get the fuck up and bring the platoon in, them sneaky bastards are killing our troops out here. He screeched, with the raging expression. A sudden blast took out a crop of trees about twenty yards across from them. The abrupt eruption sent dirt and bamboo descending into the sky as it fell raining down stubbles of rock and debris. The wounded man below was now silent and no longer wailing along the filth. We have to get to him Samson. 
Tommy cried, sounding concerned for his life. Immediately, the commander put his hand atop his right shoulder no time to waste gunner, he's dead as a doornail son. He yelled anxiously. It's a killing zone out here private, these bastards are hitting us blindside with rebounds per game rockets, get the platoon together, we're heading north, these NBA's communist Vietnamese fuckers can stay believing their bullshit, but I won't and will not allow them to threaten the south into merging with them, we have allies private gunner, protect the United States at all costs. Comic gunner leave nothing breathing, you hear me boy? Shouted Samson now crouched in front of him clutching onto a smoke grenade. You know the pass private. If all fails get to it as soon as you can, Paxa has the M79 handheld grenade launcher, take position and get to cover. Comma the Medivac cannot fly over for a retrieval until all gunfire ceases, now get out of here, now. Tommy? Queried a whispering voice, a voice he felt familiarized with. I can't live without you. She muttered faintly. The violent bursts of earth shattering detonations of war had somehow muted. The water ahead of him continued to pour against his chest. Hello? Is someone out there? He shouted from inside, peering towards the doorway. This is great, Mr. Falper. I must say it seems like you're a cunt hair away from losing it, he thought to himself standing against the heat. It definitely can't be good hearing things that aren't there, he thought to himself listening for it to happen again. The warmth of the free-flowing water began to steam up the washroom, stifling him from seeing clearly as his eyes twitched away the droplets covering his face. A ear-piercing snapping began to reverberate around him. He listened, as it splintered against something metal, something close to him. His mind raced astonished of what it was, that was making such a distracting clatter. Anybody out there? I'll be right out. Just give me a chance to rinse. He spoke, hurrying under the water. He began to cleanse his eyes free from the soap and water surging overhead. Dean, is that you out there? Again, the snapping reverberated over him. He concentrated on it listening for it. It clunked again, this time thwacking against the metal shower rod. This time it was much more distinct. He brushed the liquid from his face stepping away from the water spouting. You guys better knock it off, I'll teach you a lesson you won't forget if that's you. He muttered, feeling unsettled. His blurred vision rapidly came into focus while standing against the tub. Then, out of nowhere the blaring cord-like noise began to twist together tighten forcefully causing it to splinter and hiss. He listened to the invisible sound of it clinging along the shower bars still unable to see anything except for the steam radiating from beneath. <laughs> Attentively he held his ear to the shower liner and could sense something rasping, wheezing faintly resounding above the spout. Somebody or something was shadowing him as he stood terrorized in the enclosed shower. He reached for the shower curtain to escape from it. Then without warning, the thwacking sensation plummeted downwards as if something had fallen vigorously and then hanged stiffly against the metal. Eek! The shower rod shook savagely above him as if something lifeless were swaying or swinging from it. Q. He suddenly shrieked, startled by the noise and the rattling bar. He peered at the curtain from behind the liner, noticing the outline of a face glaring in at him. Dean, stop with the fucking charades he uttered, believing it to be him. He sluggishly outstretched his arm towards the transparent liner and then paused there as if waiting for him to move, but it didn't. In horror, he stared momentarily at the indentation of the gaping mouth pressing against the plastic. The raging face began to sink into it as he fought himself to get closer. Straight away, the shower handle spun on its own, overflowing onto him causing him to misstep the water underneath his trembling feet. He tumbled against the backsplash crashing hard against his shoulder blade. The muscles in his chest sunk in as he got concentrating in front of him. With his eyes still fixed against the tainted water he curled taut against the back of the ceramic tub. His body began to quiver uncontrollably glaring at the rich blood pouring onto his bare feet as it seeped into the drain. It gushed from the faucet above discharging down onto his stark skin.
he suddenly wrenched his feet from it, gawking at it as it leaped into the grate. Tommy, I can't live without you darling, please darling dot 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 help me end it. Russell the soft sighing voice as it dampened. Oh hell, who's out there? I don't know what you're asking of me but leave me alone. Comma you hear me damn it. He wailed frantically, pulling himself out and onto the dampened tile. He gripped the towel folded neatly on top of the toilet and wrapped himself in it. Glaring at the shower his eyes fixed against the blood splatter towel. Why are you bothering me? Are you some kind of hearth bound spirit? What exactly do you want from me? I'm no help to you. He said, raising his voice, observing the blood as it sprayed from the shower jet. A moment later he crouched against the porcelain swiveling the shower knob until the blood cut off. His fingers began to tremble as he glared at his hand immersed in the blood. He left it, putting his hand into the sink on the far side of the room. Something is wrong here, if only I could figure it out he thought, concentrating on the water. Chapter 11 Intrusion He gazed out from the living room window clutching the wall with both arms peering into the nightscape surrounding him. The neighbors from earlier were nowhere to be found as he stared further out into the gloaming darkness. He took a deep breath discarding the window, wandering towards the kitchen. Entering into the darkness he suddenly flipped the light switch. A ray of light beamed down from overhead lighting the decorative room. The 1920s Art Deco styled room was wallpapered in bold delineated geometric shapes and strong colors. Standing in front of the cabinetry he quickly yanked the cabinet above, until it swung open. Inside was a white and red box of wheat checks, quick to fix party mix he sniggered, quickly disregarding it. At its other side was a bottle labeled black and white blended scotch whiskey. He studied it a moment before lifting it out. Don't you know, I actually recall something from my time he uttered to himself. He clutched the bottle tightly retrieving it in his right hand. I think now would be okay time for a nightcap he muttered, spinning it underneath his eyes. The sofa behind him creaked as he plunked against it. Twisting his wrist the bottle's top open dispersing a pleasant smell. If it weren't for you it'd be sitting here sober he pondered silently. He lifted it to his mouth and took a long lasting swig. This sips for sobriety, I've been a dry drunk dot 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 ha 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 but after this I'd say the wagon's back in full force. Well, at least for now he thought to himself, peering at the green glass sparkling against the moonlight shining in from the far window. Positioning himself against the cushions he laid back holding the black and white scotch to his face, chugging it directly from the bottle. Drinking alone again. He sang to himself clutching the drink close to his mouth as if he were entertaining guests. Drinking alone in an unfamiliar home, with friends that say they know me he crooned aloud. Nights like these I miss my squeeze the only damsel that could win me over from being that lonely loner he continued belting out. Laying deep into the polyester he glared at the scotch bottle whistling into the crown of it. Those brown eyes staring back at me under the whispering sky, no I couldn't deny it if I tried, my heart and soul is yours crying for another try, but she turned and walked away and allowed my heart to die, a destructive force she was, but this is what love does. Forget her Tom she's gone and you're buzzed crooning with the poor voice he sluggishly leaned outwards from the cushions propping the bottle against the floor and foot of the sofa. He laid back once again, shutting his eyes into pitch darkness. Chip, get a look at this pasty ass commie loving suck ass. Clamored Dean, Tommy quickly opened his eyes finding himself pruning over submerged in the aging tub. The bathwater continued to fill onto him as he glared at them. Chip. Slinks and Dean were encircling him. All three of them leering at him mysteriously as if they were hiding something from him. What in the fuck? What are you bozos doing here? Enraged he shouted, waving them away. Get the fuck out of here you schmucks, don't come back you twisted shitheads. Take a good look at yourself Tommy boy dot 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 you're not in Kansas anymore Toto, recognize the razor or the pills? You're dead you stupid fuck. Dean cried towards him with both hands lowered against his sides. He immediately peered towards the others smirking arrogantly. Isn't this the most pathetic thing I have ever seen fellas? He asked them and then spun back at him in the water. 
Chip glared at him a moment, inching closer to the old Top Gunner you call yourself an American? You're just another snake in the jungle baby. He murmured and began to snicker with the others. Slinks cocked his head and spat into the water in front of him I knew it when I seen him, I fucking knew this hack job was putting us through a hoop, he's converted into one of them baby murdering gooks, you know the type Dean dot 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 those fucking nom rats that send their five year olds into the jungle strapped up to their teeth in napalm he cried, staring him head on with a shit eating grin across his filthy face. You're a traitor aren't you? You know what this means right? It means you get to spend the rest of your spirit life eating the shit off my fucking combat boots. Dean hollered at him splashing water into his eyes. You know that stupid wench you didn't want us playing around with. He hollered, nudging the blade at his side into the water with him until it sank underneath, resting against his feet. You bastard, Beatrice hasn't done anything to you. He responded, attempting to grip the blade with his wet feet. Yeah that's the one buddy, she's a catch alright, but there is something I can't grasp about her and won't try no matter how fucking stacked she is. He hollered again, perching himself beside the emptied pill bottles. You lost it Dean, you're not in Vietnam anymore, Beatrice, Bessie, she's a young mother who supports the anti-violence movement, she hasn't done anything wrong except for support peace. He cried at him. Moving his feet inwards he used his toes to clasp the blade. Slink smirked wrapping arm around his brother. This has been fun, but all fun comes to an end when the party ride goes south, there's a lot more to this gunner, a hell of a lot more. Shrieked Dean sitting comfortably at his side facing the guys. Tommy stared at him aspiring to get hold of the straight razor without any of them noticing. You dicks don't have jack shit on her. You grease monkeys should be picking on somebody your own size instead of a petite dame like her, does that shit ever make you feel big? Fucking with the young mother that hasn't done anything to any of you. He responded, but the others burst out in laughter. Dean turned again, facing him with blood in his eyes. His face was sweating and beginning to blister. The others behind him were also breaking out. Tom peered at them wondering to himself if they were somehow infected. Fill me in. Tell me everything I'd love to hear your reasoning. He added, plunking his arm slowly into the water to clutch the razor wedged between the arch of his foot and his fat toe. He cleared his throat and leaned back towards him with the others eyeballing him. Well, where should I fucking begin? I'll first start by asking you a quick question there soldier, should a fly that lands on a starving man's plate have its filling before the man takes a swat back at it? He asked him, still facing the other two standing close to the wall. You're sick man, those Nazi Mein Kampf puzzles are just another way for you to keep living in the war, let it go man, stop living like this. Tom shouted, hurrying his fingers against the straight blade. Dean stood up holding his sleeve as if about to lift it. Secondly, if that fly gets away should that starving man repay that pesky fly by plucking its wings off one by one? He quarried, finally rolling it up revealing a deep cigarette burn. My father did this to me when I was six years old, you see he believed in retribution, if I messed up then I would pay for it iron fisted. He shouted, stuffing a green white pack of lucky strikes back into place against his upper arm. I keep these here to remind me of that old goat. Nothing you just said made any goddamn sense to me, I'm going to ask you three politely to leave my fucking house now, now please exit the way you came in and don't show your faces again. He cried, clenching the blade in his left hand. The others sniggered at him from the doorway. She's a fucking mole just like you Tommy, I drove past that pricey neighborhood full of those rich types and seen your precious dame holding hands with the fucking foreigner, after we end this short visitation I think the boys and I will just have to make a second trip over there and show her what's good for, soldier you're dismissed. He clamored, suddenly approaching the doorway towards Slinks and Chip awaiting him. He glared at him from the archway grimacing hells waiting for you to buster brown ha ha ha, oh and you can warn that bitch all you want but she's in for a unpleasant introduction on what not to do in my country, carry on. He stared at him seething from within the water you touch her and they'll cut you worse than any of them jungle rats.
If you think I'm blowing smoke up your ass check again, that's a guarantee you son of bitch. He shouted in response. Dean halted against the door placing his hand on top of it, swinging it back and forth. Oh and Tommy boy don't forget to take your pills before you dose off again like you had, that's a doctor's order buddy, I must have forgotten my man is barging in here like this, I'm sorry for our intrusion soldier, oh and cut your wrist next time it'll be a hell of a lot quicker ha <laughs> ha. Tommy peered back at him one last moment before he vanished behind the others in the doorway. He could hear them taunting each other outside where is the gratitude. Poor Tommy doesn't even know he's been brainwashed uttered Chip. He's not brainwashed you fool, it's PTS. Dean uttered. What in the world is PTS? He responded, sounding curious. Post traumatic stress disorder, it's what combat is to some men, it's either that or Tommy came back with a traumatic brain injury, whatever he has it better not rub off on you two clowns. Dean clamored. So what about the skirt? Asked Chip from outside. Tommy can have the bitch back after I teach the pom pom a thing or two, shit, maybe he will thank me in the end ha ha. Dean said, joking. Whatever has gotten into him it made him soft, I can taste the yellow all over his face. Said Slinks sounding angered. Beer run? Asked Slinks. No Dean replied from outside the door. We're going for a joyride fellas. Where to? Asked Chip standing not far from him. Have you heard anything I said in there? Dean replied in frustration. Yeah, responded Chip, sounding nervous. We're going to see how long guppies last when they're taken out the water. Who? Asked Slinks to his left as they entered into the living room. You mean the broad off fifth and sixth? He then asked. Who else would I be speaking of? Bessie. She can fool Tommy boy dot 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 but she isn't pulling a fast one on me. Dean fired back. Now close the door before Tommy catches a cold, we wouldn't want him catching the sniffles would we? I'm on it said Chip. The door outside immediately shut, he continued listening to them getting into the cattle act. He shut his eyes to rest a moment laying beneath the water. Chapter 12 The Port Royal he unbolted his eyes lying along the sea foam tile floorway. The toilet overlooking him as he put his hand atop the seat. Jesus, I haven't had a hangover since my sophomore year he thought, wondering about Bessie. He hesitated a moment before pulling himself up further. What's going on with me? I got to get to her before the others he thought, finally clutching onto it, stumbling to stand. If Dean is really out to get her I'll be at fault, I'm the one who gave him a reason to go back there dot 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 I'm so fucking stupid. He pondered stepping towards the pink pastel sink. Throw some water on your face and get to it, there's no time to watch the chickens hatch Tom. He pondered to himself as he spun the handle. Water began to fill the sink underneath him as he stared into the glass above. The mirror was aged and cracked along the lower left corner. Although, he remembered nothing of it. That fucking scotch did me in. He thought, suddenly peering down at the toilet. Vomit rested inside at the base of the bowl. There's a time for everything Tommy dot 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 but today's not that day he heard a voice in his mind begging for a break but he wasn't prepared for it. The old liver's still kicking until that changes I'm going to live the way I please damn it he thought holding on to his sore stomach. His guts felt as if they had caved in. I must have drunk myself to oblivion. He wondered. I don't remember coming in here. He peered towards the shower remembering the thwacking a day earlier. It was now noiseless. He began washing the sweat and sand from in between his eyelids. He got again into the mirror and shook his head from side to side. You're at the top of the stupid ladder, if life hasn't bit you in the ass yet it will, your only reason for being here is her, get a close look at yourself there is nothing else here. He continued staring until he shut the sink off. Wake up Tommy! A wretched voice cried hysterically, suddenly frightening him. A familiar voice, their voice. He spun around overlooking the bathroom but noticed nothing out of the ordinary. Bessie? He shouted, turning his attention back into the aging glass. He stared in disbelief of what he was seeing. 
It was Silver Cemetery the way he had left it. The casket glinting under the summer sunset the way it had been before arriving there. He glared into glass studying the peculiar grave digger working hard in the foreground up keeping the old rickety grave asides from falling further into extinction. There were lost loved ones standing off foot from their graves staring back at him from the opposite end of the mirror. Their freakish faces were hardened almost ice-like as if it were the moment they had died. They appeared troubled at the sight of watching him. Beat it, you don't belong here one of them shrieked. A elder man wearing a 1940s brown and white pocket squared flannel suit. His face was sunk in, skeletal like as he eyed him from behind the glass. He was hairless and had bushy eyebrows. I said beat it buster dot 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 you don't belong here. He shouted, his voice was raspy and faint. Tommy glared at him and then peered towards her casket to the far left of him. His eyes traced the lid from behind the mirror. It sluggishly opened as he stared wondering if it were her inside moving it. Bessie is it you? He bellowed. A split second had passed as the lid popped completely open standing in the sunset. Unable to see her he awaited for somebody or something to come out. Baby doll is it you? He shrieked for a second time but nobody came. He can see us. One cried from behind in the woodland. You who, ha ha a warm voice breathed by him from behind. Bessie? He asked, spinning away from the mirror. Unable to see her he turned once more into the mirror but the vision had left him standing in curiosity. Bessie, oh god I remember it all now dot 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 everything, our love, your death dot 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 how could I have forgotten you? He felt the earth shattering revelation overcome him. I love you baby I'm coming. He plodded from the bathroom into the living room and peeked out from the window. That's it, I'm on my way, hold on for me sweetheart, I won't let you down dot 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 not this time, never again. He thought to himself. Concentrating on her he opened the door and hurried outside. If there's anything in my life I haven't done right I'm going to make a difference this time, right now. Comma there's nothing in this world I'd rather have than our never ending love. He contemplated, standing along the grass facing the Foxwood garage. The carriage house garage doors were left up somehow before he arrived. He entered inside staring into the darkness of the musty carport. Miscellaneous equipment hung from the wall neatly. His heart suddenly skipped a beat. T-Bird parked there gleaming beautifully under the darkness. The sunlight from outside began glistening and hitting its magnificent form. I haven't seen you before. But you can be the number two in my life he spoke aloud, feeling overjoyed. A black Ford Thunderbird known as the Port Royal sat patiently underneath a thin coating of dust. His hands began to quiver as he glared astonished. Let it purr baby. He uttered. He reached for it putting his fingers around the door handle. Pulling it up the driver's door cracked open. Baby you are cherry, and hog tied screaming. He thought hastily. Let me get a feel on you, we don't have much time he murmured quietly. He lifted his legs into it putting them against the rubber floor mat. He quickly noticed the ring of keys dangling from the ignition. Now that's serendipity dot 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 I'll live with that any day he clamored yanking the key sideways until the motor shot under a pro ring. Purring like a kitten searching for its mama's milk jug. He murmured immediately yanking the gear along the steering column from park down into drive. The black Thunderbird hovered down a tiny dip in the driveway as he pressed against the accelerator. Those greasy buzzards want the real Tommy huh? He asked himself, mashing the pedal until the wheels smoked peeling speedily off into the mid-afternoon sunshine. He lowered the accelerator until the gauge reverberated hitting 95 on the highway. Staring into the rear view the road was unworldly empty. He shot through the open road heading in the only direction that made any sense to him. You have to hurry Tommy. She spoke in a whisper. Bessie? He cried, holding the wheel in front of him stable. Baby, I'm coming I'll fix it, I'll fix this for us. He yelped, staring ahead ignoring the other voices crying for him to head back. You dim-witted bastard, turn back now. Howled another voice coming from within the T-Bird. He's not listening. Screamed another from afar, from the back seat. Tommy. 
hollered a feminine voice, that of a young child. Teddy needs you now. She wailed uncontrollably, causing him to take his eyes from the road. He spun his head around to catch a glimpse of her but a seen nothing except for the leather upholstery. I'm doing my best. He howled nervously, gunning the pedal until it hit the floor underneath. Up ahead he observed a street sign exiting into Boulevard Park which wasn't far from Lakeside Manor. He branched off exit 22 steam rolling towards another side street that crossed over into a housing development. Tommy! cried the same troubled voice of a adolescent girl. He glared into the mirror ahead of him, again seeing only the rear windshield in the distance. Stop that! He responded, clenching his fist against the steering wheel. Go right! whispered another voice to his side. He peered momentarily towards the passenger seat before releasing the gas pedal, but could see nothing. He lowered the driver's window taking in the sunset as he nurtured the Thunderbird to a steady roll. This is a place I know it is he muttered, peering at the solid sign reading Lakeside Manor supported with the chain and two to buy followers. The voices surrounding him had stopped. His fingers trembled in anticipation of what was to come. He taped the accelerator rounding the block until the unexpected scintillating force of light flared across his face from behind the windshield. Ahead of him were emergency crews aligning the street. A 1960 Buick Premier Ambulance was parked against the curb just a few yards short of Beatrice's residence. Jesus! He thought, quickly gawking towards her driveway. His eyes were filled in unspeakable terror as he observed the property. Dean's polished convertible sat awkwardly halfway on the road and the private ramp leading up to their breezeway. Three black and white Ford Galaxies police cars were blocking the road ahead with their red and blue roof lights cascading out into the landscape. The cars appeared abandoned as he slowed down. He pulled the bird up until it rubbed the sidewalk and jerked the gear shifter into park. Tommy eyeballed the residence noticing a small pack of onlookers from the neighborhood standing in the distance. Some were staring towards Bessie's residence and others were sitting perched along the curb all stretching their property. He clutched the handle and pushed the door open out into the world. His eyes were full of worry as he stared at their home. He felt instantly uneasy about Dean's car being there approaching the other bystanders grouped together. What's going on inside? He asked a short woman who appeared to be in her late fifties. He studied her badly blemished face as he stared at her. Her hair was cut short and down to her shoulders. She was wearing a light blue parka that hung to almost to her knees. I'm not sure, we heard a violent argument and then a shrilling squeal coming from within about five minutes before the police arrived, Helen Dunkley, right over there she said, pointing towards a hefty looking woman. She believes it's the daughter dot 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 uh I forget the name, B. Beatrice? He responded, cutting her off before she could finish joggling with her name. She rather people call her Bessie he said, glaring at the wrinkled woman. You know her? She responded, both suddenly turned towards the house and then towards each other. At one time I thought I did he said. But that was nine years ahead of now he added. She gawked at him I know the feeling she responded, not taking much mind. I'm not sure you do he murmured. He peered once again at the Cadillac and back to her and the others motionless along the macadam. No more mistakes, I have to go and he whispered to her. Her eyes widened at him I understand, be careful mister whatever it is you must do. She said giving him a graceful nod. I don't know what it is but you remind me a lot of my late husband she said sounding saddened. She then turned back at the growing group of wondering eyes. How'd he die if it's all right I ask? He responded. She briskly faced him suicide she said, closing her eyes. He peered at her once again I'm sorry, maybe I'll run into him sometime he responded, causing her to study his face. Maybe so. Chapter 13 The Doorway Tommy Felper sprinted towards Dean's Cadillac taking notice of the growing quietness behind him. Reaching the car he crouched behind it, camouflaging himself in its shadows, observing the front of the house. His hands and legs quivered in horror of what to expect. His mind began to race wondering about his future with Bessie. He glanced at the doorway realizing it was ajar. 
The door was halfway open in front of him in the distance. Is anyone inside? He called out, wondering why the police hadn't taken control of the situation at hand. Hello, I'm coming and don't shoot at me. He cried, approaching the entranceway. Dean, I know you're inside, why did you come over here bud? He clamored, sluggishly approaching the quiet home. Are you hurt? I can help if you are. He cried, hoping that Dean's anger would subside. Bessie? That's your name right? He called out for her, slowly stepping up onto the first step. I think we might know more about each other than we established earlier. Dot 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 what do you think? It sounds like a bit of idiocracy doesn't it haha -ha, but it's the truth. He cried towards the darkness inside. His eyes immediately fixed against the door, below it was a pool of blood. His hands shook as he neared the doorway, unable to see further into it. I think we have a dilemma here Dean, is somebody hurt I can help? He cried out once again. Let's not make this harder than it has to be. He shouted into the passageway, using his right hand to nudge it open. Giving it a sudden thrust the door swung open further and stopped against something in the dark. His eyes widened, wondering what had blocked it. Hello? Is somebody there? He queried, holding his fists tight in front of himself. Bessie? If you can hear me make a noise, I'm here he murmured quietly. He stretched his fingers in front of himself to feel for a lamp but felt nothing except for the withering darkness gloaming around the doorway. Peering back he could no longer see the neighbors in the distance with their eyes prying against the home. It was as if everything surrounding him was directly on him, studying his every move and breath. He outstretched his hand a second time, sweeping it against the wall behind the door. Using his fingers spread apart as if they were a web. He tried it a third time, finally pressing a light switch along the darkness. The bronze lampshade above him instantly lit up surrounding him in unspeakable chaos. His throat squeezed shut and his eyes buckled in horror. His entire body trembling in pure terror. Holding his mouth with his fingers he began to gasp realizing a horrible nightmare had taken place. His eyes began to water, peering down at the police officer lying against the doorway. His boots were often tossed across the hall on the far left side of the room. His face was sawed off and hanging down from him onto the Persian carpet. A pond of the officer's blood had trickled down and stained the carpet to unrepair. He gasped again, covering his face. Across from the officer was the body of a female officer lying half nude and motionless. Her lifeless body was sitting upright against the far wall. Her hair was hanging down over her face covering her complexion as he neared her. A massive blood smear covered the floor in front of her. Tommy glanced down at it a moment, observing an old rusted wooden handled chisel sitting underneath the blood. Dean? Come out here and talk to me? We can fix this mess together. He cried out, but nobody answered in return. It's funny though I gotta say, I'm the so-called war hero but you hacked the shit out of these coppers bud. Maybe we ought to start calling you the real machine gunner ha ha. He joked humorously, hoping he would respond. Come on out now, I thought we were pals? He asked, standing a foot from the female's body. Her police uniform was torn open underneath her fingers and her pants were unbuttoned and forced midway down around her thighs. He stared at her again, taking notice of her arms lying delicately across her upper chest. Bessie? Has he hurt you? Cry out if you can hear me, darling. He hollered towards the back hallway. His eyes fixed against the police officer's chest. He crouched down at the foot of her, slowly moving for her arms. I'm just checking you out, officer. If you can hear me my name is Tommy Felper, I won't hurt you. He whispered quietly to her. He steadily clasped his hand around her forearms jerking them apart in front of her. Suddenly, a black-handled Smith & Wesson M&P Colt revolver tumbled onto the floor beneath him, thwacking against her blood. Shit! He whispered to himself, immediately lifting it from the wetness. He studied it a moment before cleaning it on his shirt. Setting the hammer he held the Colt in front of him, aiming it towards the narrow hallway. Tommy pointed the Colt revolver cautiously in both hands. His mind raced in a panic wondering if Bessie had somehow gotten away from him. 
Nearing the hallway he entered into it catching a phase written messy along the right wall. Fuck the fuzz, I'll kill you all for allowing my lil B.R.O. to die in Nam, traitors must pay in blood. It was finger painted in blood along the wall as he crept further into the dreary hallway. His eyes were lowered and in the sights of the revolver as he tiptoed towards the first room on the left. Suddenly, without warning he heard commotion coming from the other end of the hallway. He awaited it, it quickly ruffled and then stopped. Hesitating to go further he stuck close to the opposite side of the room, outstretching the powerful Colt. He squeezed the black handled grip tightly underneath his quivering fingers. Bessie? He whispered towards it, unable to see through the darkness ahead. Is that you? He questioned it, his hands trembling against the gun. His feet fought to go further as he crouched lower against the floor creeping towards the noise. He could sense the blood running through his fingers holding the deadly police revolver. Come on instead. A voice broke through the darkness. Your little traitor awaits you, come on gunner, did you think I didn't know about that cult? Ha ha I left it for you fella, you're the big time war hero Tommy, I doubt for one moment you even need that piece of gun metal to prove yourself, I bet Samuel Colt himself would be turning in his grave if he's seen you now soldier, Samuel Colt, the goddamn Connecticut gun manufacturer of all specialties, that's right fella, what was it? 1836 or something like that. The man had a vision and went with it Tommy. He shouted, enraged from within the darkness. Unlike you, never kept the fucking word of what you promised in Nam man. He clamored from behind the pitch dark. Slinky died in vain, and you fucked up hardcore, we will make things better Dean dot 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 the world will be a better place, blah, 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 fucking bullshit. Dean shouted angrily. Tommy plodded slowly towards the opening of the hallway, closely listening to him speaking. It is a better place Dean, we won the fucking war, let Bassy go and IT can be just you and I. He shouted in return. Nobody has to die tonight, IT can all go back to the way it was before, you know dot dot like when we were kids. When life was still simple. Playing Indians and cowboys. He responded waving the revolver in front of himself. What about Chip? He took five to the head, what did you do in Vietnam Tommy? Did you serve America? I think not. Comma you came back and was soft as melted butter dot 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 you're a piece of commie loving trash, see night in your face after we stopped to talk to her. Comma that's right dot 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 the dirty whore. Comma Bessie the skirt who fucks around with foreigners who aren't even supposed to be in this god forbidden country. The U dot 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 s of fucking a. He continued shouting from afar. He'll give you cowboys and Indians fella dot 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 come on in here and we can do it like the old days, I have a sarpic for you and the eewa ace ha 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 ha. He laughed uncontrollably from behind the shadows looming over the hallway. Too late he shouted playfully, immediately a large turquoise 1950s eclectic kitchen lit up brightly at the end of the hallway. He peered at it before noticing his shadow growing closer. Tommy stood holding the Colt revolver at him as he wheeled a chair towards the opening of the hallway for him to see. Thada. Come and meet the newest member of the group. Dot 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 Mickey. I told you I wanted you to meet him, you two got some serious catching up to do. He clamored, spinning him around face to face with him. His fingers twitched against the metal trigger. Shaking nervously clutching the revolver you're sick, what the fuck is this? He responded, his legs began to wobble underneath him like fine wire as he approached the deceased Vietnamese man sitting in the chair. The man was wearing a green Vietnam flak vest with the number 46 carved roughly into his throat. I kept track of mine soldier dot 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 put that number on him for a reason killer used a kitchen steak knife to do it ha ha, he was alive pleading with me the whole time. He yelped at him. It was damn dull too ha he shouted, snickering to himself. Casualties of war my friend, casualties of war. Dean murmured, holding something wrapped inside of a towel. That ISNT all I have. He said, suddenly he leaned against the kitchen sink behind him, unwrapping the towel as it jiggled in his bloodied hands. Tommy watched wondering what it was. 
something alive began to quake underneath it as he unfolded it from within. His stomach began to twist in knots, glaring at the infant. You see Tommy, this broad had you where she wanted you, a slant-eyed child, with all the guys she cooled have been with dot 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 she choose to sleep with the enemy. He said, pointing at the tiny baby. Never mind this dot 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 back to Mackie, you remember him right? He asked him. He glared at the dead man perched against the rolling chair. I don't know Jack about that man, I take it you killed him for fun right? Tommy responded holding the colt in his direction. Well dot 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 when you allow the enemy to live next door to a fucking hard ass military man such as myself dot 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 what do you expect? Was I to allow this man over for a cup of fucking sugar? He responded, gripping the infant again into his arms. The water's deep for him dot 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 babies don't always like bats Tommy, but I guarantee you this one does, drowning rats is what I do best. He cried, lowering the baby towards the steaming water. Stop now dot dot or you're dead grease spot. He cried in disbelief standing at the doorway. Dean suddenly pulled the infant back from the surging water, holding the tiny baby against his face. Smells the same dot 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 no difference in IT being a infant, one less enemy on our American soil. He hollered. Tommy ignored him a moment catching something in the corner of his right eye. Along the floor was Bessie lying out cold. The joists of her arms were tethered and her head was cocked slanted awkwardly to the side along the kitchen floor as if she was beaten. The infant's pacifier resting beside her. It must have fallen when she was struck, he wondered. Make a sudden move Dean dot 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 and I won't hesitate the way I had a nam, you're lower than them dot dot you're worse than them dot 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 you just don't know it yet. Tommy spoke calmly holding the Smith & Wesson revolver point blank at him. Put the baby on the floor and walk off. He cried in desperation. You're yellow, not a chance in hell buddy dot 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 not gonna happen, it'll put in plainly gonna rain nobody gonna stop me, not you dot 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 not Jehovah himself, and not God. He hollered angrily at him. Suddenly, pressing his arms against the infant's struggling body. He began to lower the infant into the hazing sink water. Horrified, Tommy's eyes shuddered in pure instinct, yanking the trigger the Smith & Wesson Colt revolver fired into him. A ear-piercing blast reverberated surrounding the dam until he could no longer feel the cold steel quivering in his grip. What's the answer? Hello? Tommy are you there? A familiar voice spoke aloud. Tommy Felper sluggishly raised his head from the school desk. A personalized pencil with the words Marietta High School inscribed into it immediately rolled from underneath him onto the floor. He wiped the spit from his mouth, causing the students around him to laugh hysterically. I see you're finally with us. Responded the same voice. A female voice, one he had grown obsessed with ever since arriving there a year prior. He sat upright. Bessie's Anderson's voice continued to confront him for falling asleep in the classroom during one of her rants. Tommy dot 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 this cannot happen in my class, are you not sleeping at night? She questioned him, the students gawking continued to snicker towards him. He could sense their eyes all over him. Im, im. U-H-H-H, im sore. She quickly interrupted him from being ashamed. Raise your hand if no who had assassinated President Lincoln. She called for the class to answer but nobody had the right response. Tommy, can you tell me WHO shot Abraham Lincoln in April 14, 1865? She asked him, realizing he was as clueless as the rest. You're becoming a headache in this classroom Tommy dot 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 you really are, I didn't wanna call your parents but I feel like you're forcing my hand. She clamored at him, angrily approaching him. Now get your things together and head to the front office. She demanded him. Frustrated with him she began to beat her hands against the top of his desk. Hurry, come apostrophe on dot 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 you wanted to interrupt this classroom right, get your books and your bag and let's go. She said raising her voice. She hastily bent towards him clinching one of his academic binders in her hand suddenly knocking his art folder onto the floor beside another student. What is that? What is that Tommy? She shouted, 
suddenly disturbed by one of his drawings. He peered towards her hovering over his personal things. What is what dot 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 Mrs. Bessie? He responded, acting as if she had seen something that wasn't there. Is that you and I? Listen Tommy dot 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 you're a student, I'm happily married and have a family, this is really sick. She yelped at him. The students sitting behind him began to chuckle uncontrollably. Wait a moment. She crouched down retrieving a plastic zip lock packet from the side folder. Heroin, Tommy dot 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 you're bringing narcotics into my classroom? The cops will be all over you for this, you just wait here I'm going to alert Principal Williams. She cried aloud, waving the plastic baggie and a used syringe above him. John Wilkes Booth killed President Lincoln ma'am. He hollered, immediately her eyes became loose marbles staring back at him. Her face became frigid before him and the classroom once full of humiliation had turned into a deadly stare down. Do you love me? He grilled her standing there elegantly, overlooking him. You think something is wrong with me? Don't you? He cross-questioned her, sitting comfortably in his seat. Without you I'm nothing Bessie, you're the fire in my soul, you're the only reason for my existence. Her eyes began to water and tear up in front of him. His intentions were true. Deadly but true. The love he had for her was the kind of love only a young man could feel for a much older woman. A sophisticated woman. A educated woman he had grown to fantasize about every morning before and after school let out. A blinding love, one that only he could ever understand. Tommy Felper and his soulmate glared expressionless at each other as if their love had began and ended that very moment in time. Bessie Anderson stared silently, tongue-tied against the very monster she had created without even knowing it. Don't worry yourself baby he whispered to her, momentarily glaring at the banner above the chalkboard. It read 2016 American Heritage Class printed in bold block lettering. His eyes traced it and then went back on hers. What year is this? He asked her, blinking his left eye as if something had flown into it. She peered at him, observing the ulcerated sores leaking out from open abscesses along his underarm. The heroine was working its magic as he sat folding one arm behind his head. Staring into the barrel of Tommy's father's .38 special she covered her face behind her trembling fingers. Awaiting the fire to roar towards her. It's time to go home he sighed, leisurely tugging the trigger. The End